Good morning. Three days ago, I did not have a speech. Five days ago, at 12.29 a.m., I posted on my private story that this senior speech is not going to get done and that I was seriously considering just coming up here and beatboxing. <laughs> but I don't know how well that would go, so I'll just stick with the senior speech. I have known that I wanted to do a senior speech ever since the first one that I heard. Jess Cohen was speaking about her experience at Brooks and the way in which it shaped her. I admired the amount of courage that she had to open herself up and talk about her struggles, the issues that she faced, and provide a little insight to the people of our community as to why she was the way she was. I wanted to do that. So again, that brings me to three nights ago, sitting on my Red Sox blanket in the hallway of Merriman at 1.30 a.m., listening to Last Kid by Taylor Swift for the 18th time in a row, cursing my sophomore year self, for making a vow to deliver a speech to the entire school and trying to figure out how to put my Brooks experience into coherent and meaningful thoughts. In the fall of my second sophomore year, I arrived at Brooks, unaware of what the future would hold for me. I was so paranoid and doubtful that the spring before I came to Brooks, my advisor at Brookline High told me to write a letter to myself as a senior. Instead, I wrote two letters. One for myself in the case that I had great experience at Brooks and the other for if slash when I returned to Brookline High School after crashing and burning at Brooks where nobody liked me and I failed miserably. I had already decided to leave one school so what would stop me from leaving another? Nonetheless, these fears weren't strong enough to stop me from packing up almost everything in my childhood room, loading it into the car and starting the next chapter of my life as a new sophomore. I arrived on campus, my braces fresh off, my skin nice and tan from a summer of relaxation, and a whole lot of anxiety. Would people like me? Will I make friends? Will I succeed academically? Will I become a varsity athlete? <laughs> <laughs> Will my roommate and I get along? I really could go on and on listing all of the worries I had, but I really don't think we have that much time. Now, keep in mind that I had already been a sophomore. I was a repeat, so I went in with a lot of confidence in how I would perform academically. I'd always felt pretty good about myself as a student and was used to getting good grades and good feedback from my teachers. However, I was in for a rude awakening, especially in my AP World History class. I had already taken World History my freshman year, so I was like, oh, that should be fine. <laughs> it wasn't. First off, I was surrounded by people I didn't know but who already knew each other, and that was really intimidating. I was also surrounded by people who were confident in themselves in class, who spoke openly about um, what they thought and who were passionate about what we were learning. Meanwhile, I was too lo busy looking down at the 53 I had earned on my most recent DBQ to even care about what led to the downfall of the Byzantine Empire. I was not used to this kind of academic environment. At my old school, nobody cared about what they were learning, nobody spoke up, and I was used to coasting my way through my classes. So as I became familiar with the class, my confidence in my academic ability began to spiral, spiral downward. I spent all of my time comparing myself to my classmates and was filled with self-doubt, second-guessing second whether I was actually as smart as I thought I was, whether I was smart enough for this class or even for the school. I was consistently getting bad grades on almost every assessment and assignment. I wouldn't talk in class or participate in any discussions. I felt so isolated and alone, like I was the only one struggling. Then, right before March break, my teacher recommended that I switch down into a regular world history class. Again, this was in March, like six months into the class. First off, I didn't even know that this was allowed, considering the drop period was two weeks into the class, that, um, into class's first semester, and this was about five months and two weeks too late. This caught me off guard. I mean, I knew I was doing bad in the class, but I did not realize that I was doing that bad. What would people think if I dropped out of the class so far into the year? What would I think of myself if I dropped out of this class so far into the year? It was at this moment that I began thinking that I might need to break out the letter I wrote to myself in the case that I fail out of Brooks. I didn't know what I had gotten myself into, but I was tired of living in dread each time the AP World long block came around and praying the teacher wouldn't pick on me every time they asked a question because most of the time I had no clue what the answer was. Mostly, I was tired of seeing everyone else succeed while I sat alone and felt like a failure. I remember thinking, if my teacher doesn't believe in me, how am I supposed to believe in myself? Maybe they were right, maybe I should switch down. However, after many long, Heated discussions with my parents over March break, I made the decision to stick it out for the rest of the year. I had made it through six months of this torture, so honestly, what were three more? 
I wanted to finish this year stronger than I had started it, and that would mean a lot of hard work. I began meeting with my teacher every Wednesday before classes to go over stuff I was confused about, which was usually a substantial amount. I would try to muster up the confidence to speak more in class, and I made study plans for myself when it came to tests and quizzes. I tried my hardest. I finished that semester with barely an 80 in the class, a three on the AP test, and a vow to myself that I would never take another GBQ or AP history again. The difficulties that I faced in that class showed me how much I have to learn and how much I have to grow as a person and as a student. It also showed me that it was all about my attitude. As soon as I got out of my head, stopped comparing myself to the other people in the class, and started thinking about the content of what I was learning, I found that I became much more successful. Even if, it had, if, even if I didn't do as well as I wanted to, I realized that how smart I was had nothing to do with the grades that I was getting in school, and I should stop thinking about them as one and the same. Meanwhile, during my time at Brooks, I was faced with other issues as well. Not only did I have to acclimate to a new school as a new sophomore, I had what I viewed as my chaotic personality to deal with. Growing up, I had always been very self-conscious about myself in social situations. I tend to say what I want, when I want, and some of the times it just doesn't make sense. I was constantly anxious about what we, people were thinking of me, how people viewed me, and how my every mood affected those around me. Coming to Brooks was no different, if not more anxiety-provoking. I thought that boarding school was going to be full of people who looked put together all the time, who acted put together all the time, and who were put together all the time. I was, I was going to be surrounded by people 24-7, and there was literally nowhere to hide, especially from my roommate. I knew that it would be difficult to suppress my crazy side for the three years, but going into Brooks, I didn't feel like I, I would have a choice if I wanted to be accepted into the community, but I really could not have been more wrong. A couple nights ago in my procrastination of doing this speech, I was looking through my Snapchat memories from sophomore year. I found a video of Delia, my roommate, and I laughing harder than I knew was humanly possible as she attempted to do a cartwheel on our white fluffy carpet. It doesn't sound that funny, but after, at the time it was. This was on the 7th of September, three days after arriving at Brooks. Three days in and I had already found a person who I would come to realize was just as crazy as I was. Now, that's not to say I figured it all out in those first three days. I still struggled with finding confidence in everyday life, whether it was in conversation with my friends at dinner or even one-on-one. -on -one. My sophomore year, I struggled a lot with finding my place at this school. I spent a lot of time thinking about other people's perceptions of me instead of, fo instead of focusing inward and reflecting on what I thought of myself. The summer after my first year at Brooks, as I reflected on the past year, I realized that I had focused a lot of my energy caring about what other people thought. Though I had met incredible people who loved and supported me, I had wasted so much time thinking about all of the things I had been doing wrong. I was not where I wanted to be socially, and I promised myself that going into junior year, I should try not to put so much pressure on myself and live the way that I want to live. And I did. Though it took a lot of hard work, uh, crying, conversations, and bad days, I got myself to a place today where I found an amazing social dynamic and found people who care about me and who expect except all of the crazy that three years ago I was so self-conscious about. At Brooks, I found things that I love doing, one of those things being JV field hockey. I'm really bad at field hockey. I just want to note that my freshman year at Brookline High, I was one of the two people who got cut from the freshman soccer team. The other girl had never played before, and I had, and I had played for three years. And then, when I tried out for field hockey, the coach didn't let me, only let me go through one day of tryouts before saying, I don't think so. I then tried crew, where I was only picked to race in one out of the six regattas, and the one I did race in was the only race where they didn't make cuts. I had zero confidence in myself as an athlete. Playing field hockey in the fall of sophomore year, I hoped that maybe my athletic expertise would blossom and I could end up on a varsity team by senior year. That did not end up, <laughs> that did not end up happening. Instead, I was still a bench warmer as a junior on the team and scored a total of one goal in my career, and that one goal was an accident. <laughs> Even though my athletic dreams were not reached, I realized that I loved being part of the team. Going to games, getting into uniform, uniform and hanging out on the sidelines was just as much fun, I would imagine, as playing on the field. If at the beginning of my sophomore year, I had told myself that my parents would come to one of my games and I would sit on the bench the entire time, I would have been mortified and though it may not have been ideal, instead of commenting on how well I played, they commented on how great I cheered for my team. And either way, they brought me out for dinner afterwards, so it worked out. 
Three years ago, I was a completely different person. I had different values, different perceptions of myself and the world around me, and a complete lack of confidence. Not to say that I don't still have doubts when it comes to my own academic and social ability. Even in the past 24 hours, I have doubted myself and, my own, and in my own ability to get things done, but I also haven't let it stop me. I mean, I had three years of planning for this speech, and I still considered canceling it about 15 times. <laughs> but I didn't, and here I am today. It's okay to mess up to get bad grades or to fail at something. Embrace that part of yourself while also discovering and appreciating your strengths in other areas. Sometimes that means pushing through the hardships, trying new things, taking risks, and being vulnerable. Maybe you will surprise yourself. Thank you.